Meanwhile, back on the streets of our cities, we've seen some very odd behaviour by the police. We've seen uh, not only the police dealing with protesters uh, in a very, what I would call, soft softly, softly manner, you know, asking people to get off statues, you know, saying, please don't do that again or else something bad will happen without saying what the bad thing will be. We then see uh, both in Manchester and London police taking um, posters down that have been put there by um, campaigners for the freeing of children's children who are being held hostage by Hamas and the police are actually taking the posters down. Seems an incredible state of affairs that we find ourselves in. You're right, and I can see that you're showing the footage from Liverpool Street the other night during rush hour um, when there was a pretty significant uh, protest. Yes. Um, it's, it's impossible for me to believe that there wasn't significant disruption to commuters being able to get home after a day's work with all of these people. They just seem to have been allowed to get on with it. It's, it's, it is absolutely incredible. And the fact that that particular protest was done at Liverpool Street, which is where the Kinder Transport Memorial is, yeah. um, seems to me just particularly grotesque. Yeah, exactly right. And it does seem, and I don't think we're being unkind to say this, that the police, certainly in London, are, if anything, pro-people who are um, on the side of Palestine and anti-people who are not, because they also arrested a man uh, this week in London, in East London, um, because of something that he said about Palestinians and about somebody uh, who was found to be complaining about the number of Palestinian flags in his neighbourhood of East London, uh, Bethnal Green. I'm not familiar with that exact case, Mike. I, I, I wouldn't go as far as you have there in saying that the police are uh, pro-Palestinian or um, anti-Jewish sort of Jewish people. I, you know, I, I, I don't think that's right. Um, I think that what we're seeing is the police dealing with I think we would all acknowledge a very difficult situation. Um, it is, you know, it is not easy. For example, in a crowd of a hundred thousand people to go and arrest one, you know, 10, 20 people. The problem is that the current tactics are leading to this pretty perverse outcome, where it appears to a lot of people, like you say, that there is something around a sort of differential policing going on, and certainly the work that Policy Exchange has been doing around protest actually for many years, has looked at this sort of issue. And, uh, and I can certainly see why people are very, very concerned about it. Yeah, absolutely, because it does appear to be that way. It may be that I'm jumping to a conclusion, but it certainly appears to, to be that way, and it appears to a lot of people to be that way. And we've got another big protest coming up on Saturday. Uh, there's several posters that have appeared around uh, various online forums calling for a march for Palestine uh, in London on Saturday, the 11th of November, uh, and included rather ironically on the poster says, coaches from Dewsbury and Batley. Batley, of course, the place where a teacher has been in hiding um, ever since making a reference to Mohammed in a school classroom. So uh, it really is quite a bizarre situation all round. But David, thank you very much.